Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery and today we're going to be feeding this bin which is as of today 70 days old. That's 10 weeks and over the past couple feedings we've been feeding it in a way that the feedings are being alternated from location to location. The first feeding happened over here um, 20 days ago. We waited 10 days and then that was 10 days ago we fed in this corner. So now today after another 10 days we're returning to apply the next feeding to this bin and today we're going to alternate corners and we're going to be feeding right here in this corner this time and the food that we've got set aside for these little guys is um, pretty much the normal fare almost identical to what they received last week it's banana peels and various kitchen cuttings and one of the staple foods in my wormery at least is used coffee here we've got the coffee filter a spare coffee filter and a number of other pieces of paper here used paper towels for the most part and we're going to be using those papers to do exactly what we did in the previous feeding zones which was to actually take the food and not just toss it right into the bin but to wrap each uh, portion of food into a piece of paper and at the same time be adding bedding to the bin uh, which is just as important as the food um, to keep things in pretty good balance. So the last thing we're going to be uh, applying to the feedings as we normally do Although it's not necessary every time, but more recently I've been applying it pretty much every time is the uh, application of grit um, To help the worms with their digestion. So we'll slide all these things aside give ourselves a little bit of space to work and And get this bin fed there's a few new things happening in this worm bin, or at least new to me, things that I've not done prior to this bin, which is the application of a sheet of plastic across the top as a vapor barrier to, um, to prevent moisture loss due to evaporation. Right away you could tell it's completely covered with droplets of dew that's basically condensing moisture, trying to leave the bin and getting trapped by the plastic on its way up into the air and obviously collecting and dropping back down into the bin giving us a great deal more moisture than what uh at least what i'm accustomed to seeing in my bins and here we're going to find ourselves with a couple sheets of paper the first sheet being a uh basically a paper bag folded up neatly and here and there we could see the presence of mites crawling around but I've got to admit it was um, it was starting to get to the point at least 10 days ago the last time we were in this bin it was getting to the point where I was really gonna kind of put these mites on watch and p potentially deploy countermeasures to try to reduce their numbers if I continue to see sort of an outbreak happening but I'm glad to see that those few mites that we saw before were, was pretty much the extent of it. I don't see any more. So it does seem like their numbers are um, reducing, which is the direction I was hoping it would go so that I don't have to deal with it, <laughs> which is always a good thing. So, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, um, 10 days ago, 20 days ago, uh, I could see, at least from my angle here, looking at it from the side, that whatever was still happening in this um, first corner of the pocket feeding pattern um, was still happening. Even though we added new food here, the worms were mostly concentrated here. There was still some scraps left at least 10 days ago. There was still a, a banana peel in here, almost um, complete banana peel left. Uh, but really, other than the banana peel that was still in here, the rest of the food that they had had been mostly depleted so my main uh, curiosity in this 20 day old corner is the status of the banana peel so that's usually a pretty good measure of how things are progressing in your bin 10 days ago when we found the banana peel almost whole we uh we were not very surprised that it had not yet been broken down completely because I mean 10 days would be pretty uh, ambitious and this is not such a heavily populated bin and I don't think it's going to have the capability to break down a great 
amount of food very quickly, the way maybe a more highly populated bin would be. But I just really wanted this bin to sort of be a representative of what most people have, which is a bin that gets launched with something in the neighborhood of about a thousand worms, and to see what kind of um, progress they're able to make over time. So I'm really um, a little bit surprised to not even be able to find the, the stem of the the banana peel. Although, you know, when I when I think back 10 days ago, that banana peel was pretty much breaking up, and even its stem had been pretty heavily infiltrated and was breaking down. So it's not surprising that the only stuff I'm finding in that 20-day-old feeding zone over there is um, just a bunch of remaining bedding from that last feeding, not last feeding, feeding from 20 days ago, two feedings ago, and some worms still working it through. So I'm just going to close that back down the way we found it for the most part, and we're going to proceed over to this corner here marked with this piece of coffee filter to indicate to us that this is the current feeding zone in this corner. We had, uh, we had scattered a bunch of this white shredded paper into here to try to promote its breakdown. And the feeding that this bin received 10 days ago is very similar to what I showed you earlier in this, uh, in this portion that's allocated for today's feeding. Very similar. Perhaps today's feeding is a, a tad larger than the previous feeding, but for the most part it's almost the same exact uh, materials, perhaps just a little bit more in quantity. So this is um, kind of what, what we would want to expect because even 10 days ago, prior to us feeding this and checking that corner and finding that banana peel, the banana peel stem over there after 10 days looked almost exactly like this banana peel stem looks. I'm not finding any of the banana peel itself, so I wonder if that already got broken down. It may have. Um, kind of up high, as I'm just probing through the material up high, I'm not seeing many worms. So now I'm just going to poke all the way to the bottom to try to bring, bring up some stuff from the very bottom to check it out, see how the worms are doing. The worms are all over the place. There's a whole bunch of them trying to work down a piece of... Uh, asparagus here, little bits of bedding left over from the last feeding. This is kind of mushy, but it's, I don't know, it's hard to tell. You can't tell what it is. So the feeding zone is almost depleted of food, you know. For whatever reason, this piece of asparagus is still taking some time, but it is hollow for the most part. You can see how I could twirl it around like a soda straw. For whatever, for whatever reason, this material is taking a little bit longer. And maybe it's not so much about taking longer. Maybe there's just more tempting, delicious stuff um, that's drawing their attention more. And they'll get to the asparagus once there's nothing, at, nothing else remaining that's as tasty. So here's the banana. Another banana stem. So, I mean, considering we've got, you know, a banana stem or two, and maybe two pieces of asparagus. I think all I see other than that in here, in this previous feeding zone, is just um, hunks of bedding, bedding material, and worms continuing to work down what remains of this previous feeding. Here too, I'm just pulling up bedding so I'm not finding any other hunks of food. That kind of makes sense because the feeding was kind of concentrated to that corner over there. So that's kind of nice. They're going to continue breaking down those few chunks that we saw over there. So they're not going to starve over there yet. But it is time now, after 10 more days, to apply the next feeding. And we're going to place it right here. And, you know, I'm wondering if we should just use this as bedding as part of our feeding. And just give them a fresh feeding zone indicator. I've got one here with no holes in it, and we'll just use that. So let's um, let's excavate a little space in here. I'm just pulling together a little collection of pretty heavily broken down materials over here that we could use at the end to cover up our feeding zone. And uh, 
over here in the corner is where we were thinking to do it. Now, even though uh, yeah, even though the feeding zone was over here, I guess you know it's close enough that the worms are all quite content to be hanging out over here. So there's all worms hanging out in this corner. Or maybe they just went over there and ate, and then they came over here to relax after eating. So we've got ourselves a nice little pit to put our next feeding into. So let's bring over the uh, let's bring over our food supply for today's feeding. Okay. Now, like I said, we're going to be taking today's food and trying to wrap it up into these little. Um, wrappings so that the food isn't just placed straight down into the hole we'll create these little uh, little packages where the food is already sort of delivered into the feeding zone with its own um, little supply of bedding material so here's another uh, coffee filter one that I did not rinse off and clean up just going straight in after we load it up with some yummy food scraps. And I thought about taking some of these food scraps out of the fridge earlier to let it uh, let it thaw out a bit so that it would be easier to form into these little burritos because this food is pretty much frozen. It just came out of the freezer so I can't really <laughs> Close it up entirely. We'll just use some bedding to cover it up. How's that? <laughs> and uh, let's see. I've got a few more pieces of paper here, slightly larger, a little bit easier this way, I think. It's a used paper towel. A little bit more space in it, I think, than the, uh, the coffee filter, although not much. I think I've got, what, two more, so hopefully I've got enough the last of these couple handfuls. Here we go. I think we've got just enough. This is good. It's kind of almost like a, um, a reminder for me because I'm sometimes a little stingy with the bedding into my feeding zones. So doing it with this kind of wrapper approach, um, it almost sort of forces the, the question of, you know, is there enough... Uh, bedding in the bin and this way we can feel a little bit more rest assured that we have sufficient amounts of bedding all right so now like we usually do we're just going to top off our feeding zone with this coffee which just like the last couple times is coming with its own little wrapper food scraps back in here. And I'm already finding some nice hunks of bedding here that we can uh, do our cover up with. Some chunks of cardboard, paper maybe. I don't know, it's hard to tell. It's a little bit matted together so separating them from each other is going to help in the breakdown process. Exposing more of the surface area, more of the materials so that the worm can consume it. Okay, now before we cover up this feeding zone, we're going to try to bring over some of these materials to give the feeding zone a nice cover, like we usually do, or like I usually do at least. Um, make at least a rough attempt to level off all the material in the bin. Because then like we even saw earlier, we kind of use that as a, a gauge for measuring how much food has been consumed. Um, in the bin. So even when we came in here originally, you might have heard me comment on how that was a little bit re recessed in height because of the ongoing depletion of the food that was still in there from last time. And um, here too, it was pretty obvious that the food that they'd been given here had been for the most part eaten. So there was a little bit of a dip in the height of material here. So I'm sure we'll be able to expect to see the same thing happening to the food that we just added now next time we check in. And um, you know, this is a perfect, uh, perfect little segue into my dirty little habit of always forgetting something. And this time I almost forgot to add the grit, but it wouldn't have been a problem because 
I'm pretty sure going back two or three times I've added grit to our feedings and it's not absolutely mandatory every single time um, and sometimes you just don't have that much of it around but since I've got a fairly generous supply of crushed eggshell um, pureed almost to like a dusty consistency very very fine um, I'm just going to uncover this feeding zone here briefly just so I can quickly sprinkle in a nice generous portion of grit. Grit is the substance that worms will use in their um, gizzards. Same thing as what we use as a stomach to digest our food. But their gizzards um, use the stone, dust, or sand, or in our case eggshell, um, as like a rough, coarse material with which uh, muscular action grinds up the food uh, to help digest it. It's a much more simple digestive process than ours. So I'm pretty pleased to see that um, the moisture level is so nice in here. Um, so I'm really glad that we adopted the use of the plastic as a top sheet to cover up our, our bin. And it almost seems like these two pieces of paper hardly serve any purpose really. Um, and in time, I'm pretty sure that the worms are just going to start eating it anyway, as long as it keeps remaining nice and wet like this. So that's it. That was a pretty nice and easy feeding of our 70-day-old worm bin now. And it's uh, just interesting to watch how the feedings are diminishing over time and uh, a little bit more quickly than I had expected. Uh, one thing that I normally do is I feed in the same spot over and over so a lot of times it's very difficult to tell which food scrap that you're running into is from how many feedings ago, how old is that food now. Here it's very clear this is now 10 days old, this is now 20 days old and when we come back next maybe we'll do it in another 10 days, next time we come here to feed this last corner we'll know for sure that the food that was placed in here has had 10 days to get eaten, 20 days, 30 days. That'll give us a nice retrospective on how our feedings are doing. And from what I could tell, things are looking great in this bin. The worms look happy and healthy. The castings are developing nicely. The, um, the food supply is just enough, it seems, to be almost depleted, but not completely depleted. Um, when we come in here to feed, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up, and hopefully you'll give it a thumbs up too. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to uh, like and share, and also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. That's always really appreciated as well. So let me get this thing put away and cleaned up, but I won't keep it around. That's boring. I'll just take this as a chance to say thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you back here next time.